Hey guys, Cobble here, and hope you are having a good time during this uh, extended break, but uh, today we're going to be going over Gimbal Lock. So I'm going to briefly talk about what is Gimbal Lock because a lot of people are probably confused, and then I'm going to show you a really cool trick on how to beat it. So this is one of those, you're in the process of making something and you come across a problem, and then that problem makes you want to die, and then eventually you find out the solution. So when you're raycasting, raycasting is the quickest way to show how um, the problems with gimbal lock and how it becomes. And there has been a lot of debate over whether this is gimbal lock, but it, it is. So gimbal lock is when you have, um, you're have you rotating and you lose one axis of rotation. You lose one of your um, axes of rotation's precision. It doesn't do anything anymore. And you can see that pretty obvious with this. So when you raycast, you draw a straight line, right? So I'm drawing a straight line right out of the player's eyes. Um, so now I want to raycast at some different rotation. Let's say you were making a thing that, sh that uh, projects multiple projectiles in different directions. You can probably guess what kind of thing I got found this problem with. But we're just going to rotate by 20 degrees to the right. So we're going to do that and it shoots at 20 degrees to the right. And um, just like that. So now the problem is when I start to look up, then you'll see, all right, that's a little bit less. And if I look directly straight up, it is no longer 20 degrees. It is just shooting straight up. It's not, it's not 20 degrees to the right. So this is where the gimbal lock comes into place. I've lost my R, Y rotation. Um, and now R, Y is just zero when R, X is equal to 90 or negative 90 in this case. So I've lost that axis of rotation, but there is a way to fix this. So now if I look straight up, hey, look, it's off to the side. So how did I do that? Really, really simple. Um, I guess the solution is simple, but the reason behind it is a little bit complicated. It's using this new facing with local coordinates. So I can do a TP at S facing and then put in a coordinate to TP that direction. So uh, let me get the coordinate. So facing this red block, uh, facing the red block, TP me, and then these three things will say TP me forward one, so towards that block. And you'll see, yeah, so I'm starting to go towards the block. Um, of course, it's anchored to my feet, so some weird stuff happens. But yeah, so that is pretty simple. So you can face, make a command face a block. So now we're going to combine that with local coordinates. So what this says is face a block that is one forward and 0 0.2 blocks to the right. And when I do that, it's going to basically say, if I'm looking this way, it's going to face like this block right here, somewhere like in the empty space in front of me and, uh, and then shoot the ray going that way. Um, so you can use this with the local coordinates to get it for, uh, rotate in any direction that you want. And if you have a system that already uses this rotation to translate it, all you have to do is just make it 0.2 instead of 20. So move the decimal place um, and change the sign on this and this. So swap the RX, make the RX and RY have negative values if it's positive and positive if it's negative. And then of course you can test it in game. Um, and then also the cool thing about this method is it actually lets you adjust how tight it is. Um, so this is like fairly close to that 20 degrees that I had before, but if I make this number 10, now you're going to see it's like way closer to like no degrees at all. So you can adjust the uh, spray pattern based off of how, what that factor is. Okay. So, and then you can also like add on later like that. So you can like, you can further fine tune it by using like some criteria and stuff and uh, there's some tricks you can do to basically like have variable uh, spray width. Now that's that would be pretty much all the video is for today, but I have one more thing somebody suggested me to check out, and that is can you use it on a raycast? So that was actually a very interesting question, and it led me to a really interesting answer. Now, of course, I think that he was confused because he was using an area effect cloud in a raycast. I swear, if you come to me and say you're using an area effect cloud in a raycast, I will just laugh because that's all I can do. It, it, it pisses me off when people say they have to use an area effect cloud in a raycast. Raycast is literally one command. This particles is just so that we can see it. This is literally a raycast. Anyway, so if you use it before you do the positioned, 
So this is going to face one block, 0.1 blocks down and one block in front. And then it's going to position one block in front. So it'll play the next command, one block in this direction, really. Um, so this will get you to rotate and this will get you to move forward. So what that's actually going to do, I mean, you might be able to just pop this guy in here instead, but uh, I don't think that works that way. But what that actually does is really interesting. So you would think that perhaps what would happen is you will go, okay, so I'm forward and then I look a little bit down and then I go forward and then I look a little bit down and then I go forward and then I look a bit down then I go forward and then I look a bit down. And then once I'm at this point, I actually would look up a little bit and I would basically start to go in a circle. And you would think that would happen if you're using rotate with this, if you do this and just knock it out and do rotate, you actually will, uh, if I go rotated uh, 40, or no, let's just go 10. If I go rotated 10, you will actually see it go in a circle. So here you have it looping in a circle. That is in not usually what you want. This is actually crazy that this works, but it does. And that it probably has to do with the fact that with local coordinates, this value is always up and down. Okay, and this value is always forward. But if you're looking down, then up and down and forward are pretty much the same thing. I think so. I mean, I haven't been able to like really think it up, but check this out. So if I shoot it, look at that. It just goes straight down to the ground. Now, if I go up like this, it will actually arc with a certain amount of trajectory and the trajectory is proportional to whatever this value is or whatever this value is or whatever this value is. You can just adjust those three values to change the, I guess you could call it speed, but look at that, it arcs. And if I look straight up, it goes, it still it still does a bit of an arc so it's not perfect but it's pretty cool let's take a look at that yeah so you're always going to have some forward velocity that forward velocity is this value here and uh, this is going to dictate how sharp that curve is so but if i look straight down it doesn't curve in a circle it just shoots directly into the ground so i thought that was pretty cool um it's a really simple change you can make so that things don't go in a circle. Somebody asked me about this before and I didn't know that that behavior happened. So I told them to use rotate and it got kind of complicated. This is literally a zero command fix for that. Uh, but anyways, so if you guys thought this was interesting and want to see more, um, leave a like and uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see. Now uh, I did post a poll and overwhelmingly people want me to release this mini game. Obviously I did not have time to finish uh, polishing it up but uh, it's it's almost done. It's pretty fun. We're going to live stream some play tests and stuff and I'll post it. Um, but yeah, stay tuned on that. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.